فرصت داریم جای شروع میشه The joys of live links. <laughs> um, excuse the microphone, it's for streaming purposes. Um, thank you for joining us for this afternoon's session. I hope you had a good lunch. I know I certainly did, so thank you, Saba. Um, this conversation, we hope, is going to be smooth running, um, that technology is going to smile sweetly on us. I just wanted to introduce our chair, Nelson Fernandez. Um, Nelson has an extraordinary wealth of experience, knowledge, practice, um, understanding of arts and the cultural sector, nationally and internationally. I don't think I can name a country that Nelson probably hasn't worked in um, with his colleagues in various different guises. What was very important for us when we were thinking about today's program was how we represent Iran um, and artists and thinkers who are functioning in Iran. And um, Nelson and his colleagues um, at NFA, uh, excuse me, Nelson, International Culture and Arts, sorry, um, have been working in Iran for a number of years trying to support the independent sector of artists and producers through a training program. So Nelson's experience and his charm felt him best placed <laughs> to chair this afternoon's conversation. I'm not going to say any more. I'm going to pass you on to Nelson and our panel, and Nelson will introduce everyone else who's joined us today. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Most of that was lies, really. <laughs> um, it's uh, welcome, everyone, and it's great to um, be here this afternoon with our friends from Iran, and of course here uh, in Cambridge. Um, I thought I would just begin very quickly by telling you a little bit about what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to, we have um, some really interesting people that will be sharing their experiences with you. Uh, and I've asked them each to speak for five minutes. Now, don't forget that in the Pichicuchi you have six minutes and 20 seconds. So they only have five minutes. And though I have no gong, I will stop them if they actually go further. But the idea is that we're going to tell us, um, I'm going to tell you about some of the questions that we asked them, but that they're going to try and reply or answer some of those questions. And then um, we'll start a conversation amongst the panel, but then we want you to be a part of this conversation because this is really what is this is about. Um, it's about us collectively having a conversation. Um, so hopefully the first half hour will be our panel sharing their experiences, um, another 10 minutes or so where we'll actually we'll be talking, uh, asking questions of each other and then I would really hope that you have, that you will be full of questions that you want to um, ask our colleagues both present here and in Tehran. Um, as I've said, um, and then we'll wrap up with just perhaps some finishing thoughts that either some of our colleagues in either city may have, or indeed some more thoughts from the floor. Um, we, I'd like to just introduce now um, my colleagues, and in um, starting with our colleagues here in Cambridge, Arvan Dashtaray, who is uh, a director and a producer in Tehran uh, from Virgul, um, a company in Tehran, and Toronj uh, Khonsadi uh, from the Arts and Architecture Collect Collective Public Works. And uh, then we have John Davis, who is from Lyft, but I have neglected to find out whether you're a programmer or a producer at Lyft. Producer, producer at Lyft, as you can see. Um, and then in, uh, in Iran, uh, in Tehran, we have uh, Hamid Pudasari. Hamid, would you raise your hand? Who is an independent uh, theatre director, uh, who, in fact, whose work has come here to the UK, as indeed so has our vans. Uh, and then we have Ide Abu Talebi, who is uh, an independent dancer and choreographer a wonderful and rare um, person. 
And uh, last but not least, uh, Reza Dadui, who is a writer and a director, and also one of the senior managers of the Dramatic Arts Center, which is one of the organizations with which um, my company and organizations like British Council uh, have worked uh, a great deal with in the past. So, um, without further ado, I'd like to ask, um, we're going to alternate between cities. So it's going to be a tale of two cities, and I'm going to begin with uh, John Davis from Lyft. Hi, thank you. Um, it's been nice to have an opportunity to kind of chat to most of you here. So um, I'll probably repeat myself when I sort of explain a little bit about Lyft. So we are an international theatre festival that takes place in uh, London every two years. And we work across London. We work in partnership with a number of venues, including the kind of big venues like the Barbican Centre and Young Vic. But we also do um, we also present work in unusual spaces. Um, and so for the first the last 34 years, we've been um, sort of travelling the world, finding the most extraordinary sort of daring artists, um, uh, predominantly working in theatre. Um, and so we commission new work, and we also present existing work. And I think clearly. In terms of the kind of questions we're looking to respond to, I think you know international collaboration is at the heart of what we do, uh, and that you know for for us and for our London audience, that's really about bringing artists who can who can make us see the world afresh and see their own their own context afresh, and also see London afresh. And we're you know very keen to celebrate the diversity and the multicultural um, element of London. And so there's really, you know, it's, it's really about kind of presenting these extraordinary artists who have their own aesthetic value, you know, their own aesthetic values from where they're from, and that can really, um, you know, that can that can be really quite fantastic. And it's, a, but it's also important that this exchange is a kind of two-way process, and I'm, I'll be interested in hearing about, well, from Hamid specifically, who we presented in 2012, thinking about what the, you know the experience of the artist coming to our festival is. And uh, obviously, it's the you know, kind of great stage to present work, but I, I, you know, it'd be interesting to hear about how that kind of collaboration goes both ways. Um, so, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of completely, uh, kind of a really amazing experience. But it does have obviously it's have its challenges in terms of cultural differences, and so um, uh, that can that can be challenging. And I think um, again, it'd be interesting to hear from Hamid around. Um, I think uh, Hamid, we presented, we kind of commissioned Hamid to make a work with uh, the refugee community in, in Croydon. Uh, and we had some real problems around getting him here on t into kind of getting him here due to visa issues. And he had to spend three weeks in, um, in Istanbul. But also once he was on the ground, I think there was a very different kind of practice and a very different, um, he had a different experience, with, I think, with working with um, non-professionals in, in Iran. And I think he, I think he, he was slightly surprised possibly by the, the, the challenge of engaging people and the kind of and that that process and also the health and safety process and the kind of the strict um, health and safety laws that we had that we had to adhere to um, and there's that kind of question around uh, where, where we're not making the work on the ground here when we're commissioning artists to make work in their own countries it can be very hard to kind of communicate with them and find out where you know how the show is going and how we then can communicate what the show is to our audiences um, and I think one practical point as well is that it's very expensive to um, to bring international artists here because the, the kind of cost, the visa cost, and the travel cost, and then accommodating people. So it's kind of it's a su real surprising figure when we look at how much money we have to spend around that, and not just on the artistic kind of output. And I think again, it's um, what's kind of maybe specific around Iran as well as is kind of how we frame the work we present and how we. Um, what the context that we put to that, and I, and I think that that can be quite tricky, and I think also the audiences don't necessarily have a you know a great understanding of uh, Iranian culture, and also how that uh, the kind of um, possibly I, I don't have a huge understanding, but the kind of allegorical nature of uh, some of the work, and we presented a writer um, called Nassim Salman Poor who. Whose, whose text was very much challenging this, using the kind of allegory, allegories to talk about the political nature. And I think it was difficult for London audience to know what the kind of um, the situation is and what can be said and what can't be said in Iran. Um, moving on to the kind of question of diaspora and thinking about um, how we engage with the Iranian diaspora or any diaspora. Um, 
I think that is something that we're probably not yet doing as well as we could do and I think we need to keep on making sure that we, we, we do that, we kind of focus on that more. Um, I think it's difficult you know, sometimes to ascertain who the, the work's for so we have a kind of a, uh, I guess a, a London audience and then you have the kind of diaspora audience and we are really keen to kind of celebrate the kind of diversity of London and talk to those audiences. Um, but it's, you have to talk to them in a different way than you might talk to a sort of a London audience. So it's kind of teasing out the messages that are appropriate for one audience and, and, the, and the messages that's appropriate for others. And that can take time and resources. Um, and well, that's why it's really important to work with kind of organisations that, you know, that have a grassroots connection. Because we take place all across London, we, we, you know, that's, a, that's a great benefit. We can kind of work in any area with any community, but it means that we don't necessarily, we're not able to kind of foster really long-term um, collaborations. And so in a new project, we might be starting completely again, and we, and we don't know how to talk to those audiences. So it's really important to, to kind of to find, to talk to the embassies, to talk to those organisations that are working in those areas. And um, I think when, with Hamid, I'm not sure if that was something we did a huge amount of, which is a shame. I th we, um, in the same festival, we worked with the Royal Shakespeare Company to, on the um, World Shakespeare Festival, and we presented the National Theatre of Iraq, and that, we, it was amazing to see the, 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 the kind of, the way in which the Iraqi community came to that show and really enjoyed that show. And I think that was partly because the British Council was, possibly more involved uh, and the kind of RSC had, there was a bigger kind of, there was a bigger pot of money to work with, but also um, I think um, the, you know, the embassies and, and those kind of things where with, you know, in the UK currently there isn't an Iranian embassy, so those kind of, although the British Council does great work, it's kind of trying to tease out those relationships and make them work. Um, and actually it's something that we're trying to do now more, we're trying to work in one area of London rather than go everywhere, we're trying to work in, in Tottenham where we can actually, we can kind of really create some long-term relationships and so we're not making the same mistakes over and over again um, or not having to make new relationships every festival. Um, and the kind of final question around um, interdisciplinary practice and I think it's something that comes very intuitively uh, to us, we, we're not. We're really interested in pushing the kind of the the idea of what theatre is. We don't really like the word theatre, and it's certainly something that audiences want. I think you know, it's people are after an experience, and that may be with live music, or it may be um, through through an online platform. So it's, um, I think it's definitely something that you know that comes very naturally, um, and we can, uh, and it also helps to build resilience. I think with, we can work with more interesting organisations. We, we're working more with the kind of gallery sector and visual artists, um, and uh, and working and, and working online. And it's great to have our friends here in Iran. And so it's really, you know, how can we use digital technology to connect with people who might not be able to be in the room or on the stage in London? Is really important. Great. Thank you, John. Um, in my haste to ensure that we had our panel, I neglected um, speaking directly to you. I neglected to tell you what questions we have asked them, <laughs> for which many apologies. I had also, I also neglected to um, introduce you to our wonderful interpreter, Daniel Joyaste, who is, who is actually helping us on the Tehran side. So, Daniel, apologies for that. Um, the questions that we asked, we asked our panel to look at um, a few um, issues. We, you know, we wanted to know from the panel how international exchange had impacted on their practice um, and on the work that they themselves do or that their company does. Uh, we also wanted to know something about what some of the challenges or opportunities uh, that this sort of exchange has provided. Uh, are there any challenges? Are there any opportunities? We also wanted to know something about what role uh, the diaspora, whether it be in this instance the Iranian diaspora, but really could be, we could be talking about engaging with a diaspora from another part of the world. We wanted to know whether there is a role uh, in international exchange for the diaspora. Uh, and this is in some ways, of course, a question for the 
uh, the UK side, but I think it's also important to perhaps ask our colleagues in Iran what they see, whether there is a role for that diaspora. Uh, and we wanted to, we also ask our panelists to see whether um, in their view, uh, is there enough uh, done to facilitate the involvement of that diaspora? And when we talk about diaspora, we're not only talking about artists, we wanted to know about are we engaging enough with audiences, something that John in fact has addressed. And lastly, um, we also asked our panel to look at questions of having, you know, as we move into an increasingly global community, uh, we wanted to, to find out from them whether they thought that there is an increase in interdisciplinary practice uh, and collaboration amongst cultures and nations. Is this a fact or is this a myth? Is it something that they have in their experience found to be true. So these were all the sorts of questions that we asked our panel. They obviously cannot address every single one, but we thought it would be interesting to hear their views. So having said that, um, I would now like to ask uh, Ide Abu Dhabi in Tehran to share with us some of her thoughts on these questions. And uh, because this is our new year, I just want to say Happy New Year to any Iranian there. How about I'm us? <laughs> <laughs> to us as well. <laughs> okay, <laughs> why not? And um, uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself that I'm Ide Abu Talebi. I am dancer, choreographer, and Iranian actress. Uh, I live in my country, sometimes here, sometimes anywhere else. And uh, as first I want to say about the question that you said about the challenge about this kind of project, multicultural project that uh, we started uh, in our country. And it's very challenging. The first time that it happens to me, it was about Mm, eight years ago when a um, German director called me to be in his project for some kind of uh, theater activity and uh, when I get to the audition uh, I really get upset that I'm not the one uh, who will choose by him because in that audition there are a lot of um, strong uh, oriental people with a very strong techniques, with a very strong knowledge about um, the things that is my line. And uh, I really shocked when I cast, when he cast me. And uh, it was very interesting for me. I, at first I wanted to know the reason. And the reason of him was uh, he really needed some multicultural people uh, in his project. and. Uh, it really changed my life because after that I understood that how interesting is this kind of project to working with many other countries in one um, community in this kind of activity and it was really enjoyable. Uh, of course that time it was only five days rehearsal and two days shooting but um, only years rehearsals give me a lot of experience that I didn't catch it before by many other performances and theaters that I uh, had uh, activity with them. So uh, fortunately during uh, these couple of years, especially in 2014, I had this kind of um, experience with uh, some, uh, with um, so many uh, with two choreographer, European choreographer and director, and uh, I, I gained the disability again by them. And one of the most important things that happens to me in 2014 that I was invited to uh, a theater company in Poland, uh, which is very famous com theater company, it's Gortowski. 
when I invited her as a um, choreographer, I really understood that uh, how enjoyable is doing this kind of cultural activity with uh, some people. When we when we had to brought some of Iranian children there and combine the culture of Iranian with with one other countries, it really facilitates the. Um, ability of uh, this kind of um, uh, project and I really feel like in, in this project I really feel like that uh, the people can grow themselves so easily and it was so amazing for me to work in this kind of work and um, after that uh, I wish that how we can do this kind of project in our country and uh, when I came back from Poland and I uh, started my activity with Virgul company by Mr. Uh, Arvan Dashtar, like, it was so amazing that uh, he's starting this kind of project in, uh, in my country. And I really appreciate to work this kind of work in uh, my homeland. It was so amazing experience for me and I really learned a lot of things about it. And uh, I think that this is very powerful experience, and it can it can make a very good um, it can open the eyes of any artistic uh, activity of the people, and uh, I feel like that as a performer, as a director, as an any kind of artist. It's very important to combine your heart, to combine your root with any other person. Um, performance and acting on the stage is kind of self-possession. And uh, at first you have, to, you, you have to love yourself. You have to love your uh, other actress on, or actors on the stage. And when they are from many different countries, it's very enjoyable and it's the essential part of cultural engagement. And I really like this kind of team building that can erase the border of the countries. It's a powerful experience for me and it can, it can make me much more strong in this field. For me, any country is new. Any country has some something that you can learn from it. Sometimes it really teases me that I think that I'm coming from a third world and other countries from are, are better. No, I really challenge, I really uh, think about myself that, uh, uh, that it's not true to think and underestimate one country and compare it, compare the skill, the skill and the ability of one country with other the ability of one person with other, any person can have something new and you can share that new uh, experience of any person by each other. And... How come you did it or you put down more than you zone which go to the show not for No, no, no. Okay, so I think that this kind of project is very multi-real, multi-layer products because you can see the layer of any country and the, you, any country has a different layer of inheritance and uh, as an artist it's so beautiful to combine the humanity and the root of uh, this heritage with each other and it's really in-depth training as a professional goal for any of artists, I really think it's in depth training. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, now I would like to ask um, Arvan Dasarai from Virgul to uh, share with us some of his thoughts. Um, I'm Arvand. 
I've been working in Tehran since I think 2000, 13 years ago. And I've been making around more than 25 theatres in Tehran and also in Paris, Italy, UK and also in some other places that I don't remember now. <laughs> but from the beginning, I, I just, uh, you know, I'm coming from the country that has a completely blur and false images all around the world. When I was 19 year old and I did my first travel and I went to Italy, I remember this false image from the airport. That, and, uh, why, and also when I grown up and I traveled more in different festivals and everywhere, I've been keep asking questions, weird questions that do you put, um, is everybody in Iran put on the same clothes as you are putting? Or do you do pants like that, jeans, do you wear jeans? And that kind of questions and also more bigger questions like, do you have uh, cars or... Yeah, this, this, um, and these images in the other way that we are building from a country um, is, as I, I put these images aside and also at the same time why we, I, I think in theatre we need to do these exchanges because this is the only place maybe in theatre we can sit together, we can work together, we can have this eye-to-eye -eye communication yet and sit and talk, spend times and hours to talk about our cultures and also our behaviors, our daily behaviors. This is the only place maybe they can get closer to the truth, if there is any truth, of, or reality, to what is exactly uh, different cultures and different behaviors of people of different geographies. I think um, when at the beginning, I started uh, the first international exchange with friends, with the French. We brought 15 French actors to Tehran and we uh, tried to work with them in Tehran, which was the first Iranian international or uh, collaboration or exchange. Nobody knew anything about it when we went to the DAC, even they don't know how to deal with it. How we get visas, how we could get fundings, I put it aside. But the thing is, we had 15. Um, French actors and actresses and also we had 10 Iranians. I've been working with them in like four or five weeks and we've keep working with them, different rehearsals, different methods, different techniques, but at the end the French have been French and the Iranians have always been Iranian. I couldn't mix them, you know, we are working on a rereading of the uh, Vincent Van Gogh and I think we lost our connection with Iranians <laughs> in Tehran. Um, yeah, I can call them back, it's okay. Uh, and at the end, I've tried so many different rehearsals and so many methods that I knew those days, but still, when we were working, there were Iranian group and there were French group. So, uh, we started to try games. We started to play games with them and by playing games together, we... I'm just going to call them back. Also. And by playing games together, then they started to be like children, and this childish playing together make them one company again together. There were no more Iranians or French, so the culture got mixed. So I had that experience that, okay, now with with children presence, they can be more, we can get rid of the otherness more and more better. So this is one of the valuable experiences that I had, which I keep continuing working on the games and being honest together and being ourself, because I think in the contemporary sociology is also the most important things is to have this um, communication or relation, to study the relation between self and the other and how they keep staying as an eye, two different islands, are they going to um, transfer to each other or what they do together. And in all of these theater practices that I've been involved and also in the last one which was 
directly about the misunderstanding between the cultures. And the name was London, Rome, Tehran, Amsterdam, which we worked in Tehran. And it was the self of the performer with interaction of the others and the ambience that they are working on. So we had a British performer, first time coming to Tehran, with all the pre-images that she had. She's sitting right here, Amy. And she was coming there with herself, with her knowledge. She had to be Amy during their work, during the rehearsals. And at the same time, she was in Tehran, so the ambience, the atmosphere was affecting the show and her. And also, the whole show was about her experiences, what she had to say, what she has to give, what, uh, what will be her communication as staying, stay being the other, and at the same time, um, observing to the theater company. If I want to con um, just conclude, have a conclusion about what I'm trying to say is um, it's very important in this kind of practices that we can do with theater. The, the theater can bridge our images from each other and also rebuild it again to have the chance to travel to different cities, to have the chance to bring now Iranians to this um, to London, for example, to again have the same experience and the same feeling in, inside the atmosphere and also experience that being inside the other, what it means and how they can communicate together. And one more thing, do I have more time? And one more thing and one more question I want to bring up is um, our information and images from each other are affected by the media, false information, internet, and uh, the big culture who is eating and making every culture the same. And I think the biggest crisis that our lives in contemporary living is, we are having is this crisis of false information. Previously we had like journalists who were searching for the truth and now the, the, there is no journalist anymore. Sometimes we just Google and the, these engines are searching for information for us and just give us the more uh, pop, more seen news that, we, that there are in the net. Or in the media with so many purposes, so many things that are, I'm reading in, in European news from Iran are about so many human rights problems that we have. I'm not saying that we are not having them, but at the same time nobody's talking about visual art scene in Tehran, the contemporary, young, talented art scenes. Nobody's talking about, we are having like 50 performances per night in Tehran, and also nobody's talking about how many uh, painting galleries are opened in Tehran, and how many um, short film festivals are existed, and also how much young community of Tehran has a lot to say and talk about. Um, I cannot find anywhere about the uh, other sides of this otherness, I can't tell. So uh, I think theater, again, with the support, can make these scenes more close to the reality and more close to the truth, truth of the images that we have. Also, from my side, so many people have very strange images of UK people, of the of London, you know, more touristic, I can say, visions or ideas about the co other countries. So, in theater, we could gather together, we could work together for two months, we could bring some people from Italy, from uh, Netherlands, and also Moraine is here from Netherlands, we have been, I have two of my performers here now, I'm so happy. And also, uh, from Tehran and they could gather together, work together for three months and experience how is it living because theater brings living with it. So we had to live together because of this living together we can share more and because of this sharing more we can uh, have a better understanding rather than news, media, internet and other, all other things that I think uh, they're blurred, they're false. So. Um, my expert, I'm, I'm going to continue this kind of works in theater 
and this project that I'm working on is a five-year research-based project which will be the study in the cultural scene, the cultural studies, and at the same time we are trying to bring it over to UK. We are trying to travel in UK, rehearse in UK, communicate with the universities also because we want to study that more and go deeper and deeper on the sociology and also human studies and also in 2016, we are going to, 15 I think, we are going to be in Netherlands and then in Italy. And also we are adding Beirut, Paris, Berlin to the project. So it will be London, Rome, Tehran, Amsterdam, Beirut, Paris. And it's going to continue because more cities are going to gather and we are just... Also there is another campaign which I will finish my words with. Reconsider your image of me. I think all of us needs to reconsider our images of each other, <coughs> that you can join us. Thank you. Thank you, Ravan. <coughs> Would you like some water? I think we need some. Yeah. Uh, have you got some? You. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, if I could ask uh, Reza Dadui, uh, in Tehran to share some of his thoughts with us now, please. Uh, we want to say hello to you too and congratulate the new years of us to you English guy and to Iranian community uh, out there, uh, Happy New Year. Have a good time. Man, I want to talk about some of the things that you have done in the past few years and the different activities that you have done in the past few years. Mr. Dodd, I wanted to speak generally about the streams and um, situation and activity that we have uh, in intercultural theater activities. Uh, I think uh, the I think theater is one of the uh, most important elements of uh, intercultural um, uh, you know activities um, can uh, divide into, uh, you know, the main purpose can divide into two things, you know, it, it has two branches, and if you want to, you know, if you want to... I think the first thing I want to say is that the first thing I want to say is that the first thing I want to say is that the first thing I want to say is that the first thing I want to say is that the first thing I want to say uh, he says that uh, we want to respond to two needs. Theater want to respond to two main needs and desire. One of them is to respond to the, all the social activity that uh, you know a normal um, you know nation has. All of the activity. And va بخش دیگری از این نیازی که تو آس میتونه بهش پاسخ بده به عنوان یک فعالیت مهم فرهنگی. فکر می کنم توی تبادلات و گفتگوهای بین فرهنگیه بین هر جامعه که توش داره تئاتر اتفاق می و جامعه ای که تئاتر بهش عرضه میشه. این در واقع میخوام بگم که توی این تبادلات بین فرهنگی که میتونه به این دو بخش نیاز پاسخ بده یکی داخلی یکی بیرونی و بین المللی. And one of this uh, needs uh, that uh, theater can respond to it is uh, intercultural dialogues that um, you know, we had and we have and we will have, you know, the dialogues that, be, uh, you know, uh, is going to be held between two nations. Theater can respond to these needs too, it's the second branch. I think that this activity and cooperation is a part of the energy and energy of the three parts. One is the artists, 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 one is the And uh, you know these kind of activities that uh, theater offers to the societies uh, needs a uh, three part of uh, you know uh, groups um, you know works artists 
audiences and you know the the manager the producers of these uh, kind of projects these kind of people these three uh, you know i uh, i can say branch of people these kind of group of people uh, can help us in these activities چیزی که میخوام بگم ارجاع میدم به صحبت دوستانمون چه در اون پنل چه اینجا که راجع به مشکلات و سختی ها و دشواری هایی که این ارتباط فرهنگی ایجاد کرده صحبت کردن من میخوام به اون ارجاع بدم و بگم که معادلات و تبادلات فرهنگی اصولا باید توسط هنرمنده آغاز میشه و ضرورت و نیازش اونها ایجاد میکنن و روشن میکنن و جامعه و حکومت مجبور میشه که به این نیازها پاسخ بده You know, um, if we, uh, he says that about the challenges that you guys in the other panel and we knows about it uh, in these kind of projects, the um, theater community of every country uh, ask this question, make these questions. And in second, the governments and the people of that society, uh, you know, should, um, you know, help to respond to this question. The work of the main uh, work of the theater society is to, you know, rise up this kind of question. و به نظر من فعالیت های هنری هنرمندا میتونه در نگاه مردم دو جامعه خیلی موثر باشه در تغییر نگاه جامعه که داره توش فعالیت فرهنگی مشترک شکل میگیره میتونه این نگاه ها رو نسبت به تغییر بده نگاه رو نسبت به دنیای پیرامونی هر کدوم از ما تغییر بده یکی نسبت به همدیگه یکی نسبت به کل جامعه ای که ما در زندگی میکنیم به جامعه جهانی um, and you know this, um, these questions if uh, they will be satisfied if this question can change the point of view of uh, you know even uh, the na- nations you know can change the point of view to themselves and to the you know the world outside the world that they are uh, connecting to that they are you know connected to و فکر می کنم که یکی از راه های این قضیه برای اینکه نگاه ما رو نسبت به هم دیگه واقعی تر بکنه زندگی کردن توی دیگه است نگاه ما رو از یک نگاه سطحی و کلیشه‌ای و اینترنتی تغییر میده و به یک نگاه عمیق‌تر میرسونه It's good? Yes. Mr. Dadi says that living in that country, in the foreign country, or, uh, you know, in different countries, uh, help us to, you know, reconsider these shallow images that we have from each other. The first step is to live in that country. to live with the people, you know, make, be familiar with their culture and this kind. و یه نکته دیگه که میخوام بهش اشاره کنم مثلا اینه که تبادل فرهنگی باعث ایجاد تغییراتی در شکل و ماهیت اجراها میشه یعنی بعد از اینکه نگاه ما رو تغییر میده کم کم روی پروژه‌ای که داریم کار میکنیم و تعریف میکنیم هم اثر میذاره و شکل کار ما رو تحت تاثیر خودش قرار میده. And, um... And it also has a very huge impact on the projects that we are working on, on the art projects that we are working. The, the first thing that intercultural exchanges um, have impact on is our project, in, on, its, on its context and even form. For example, تعداد افراد گروه نمایشنامه ای که دستمایه اجرا قرار می گیره و تأثیر متقابل مخاطبین خارجی باعث میشه که اجراهای ما تغییراتی به خودش بگیره. And it clearly have changes on the you know the number of the people in the show, the the context of the show, the place that we are choose to work because. You know, two nations should understand it. Just it, it shouldn't be just limited to one people, to one nation, nations people understand it. Uh, 
در کنار همه اینها پیشرفتایی که جامعه ایرانی در طی سالهای اخیر داشته بعد از سالهای بعد از انقلاب و بعد از جنگ نسل تازه جوونی که وارد حوزه فرهنگ شده داره تلاش میکنه خودش رو به جامعه بین المللی نزدیک کنه و در رفت و آمد بین کشورهای مختلف بتونه اثرگذاری فرهنگی خودش رو ایجاد بکنه Um, you know, um, he says that um, the, the progress that we have we had been in these years after the revolution and uh, the war, actually, uh, and the new generation that uh, is coming, tried so hard to show themselves uh, to the world and you know to try to have a good impact on the uh, international uh, you know relation relation that we have with the other countries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reza. Uh, and now if I could ask uh, Tolange uh, to uh, speak with us now, please. Okay. Hi. So um, I'm Tolange Kansari, and I'm uh, from an art and architecture collective called Public Works. Um, I trained as an architect, um, and after a few years of practicing quite sometimes commercial architecture, I decided that what I was really interested in ultimately was the city. Um, and what I was really interested in was the public spaces of the city um, and how we can claim publicness back for the public um, uh, in especially contexts like London or our cities in the UK where privatization is just taking over at a speed of light. So um, the context then I had to, uh, we had to in a way position ourselves within a cultural context in order to, to work in that, whether it was through theater in collaboration, I've been working with 30 Bird for the past 10 years, or um, we are also a collective with artists, so um, whether it's through public art. Um, in a way, our practice in itself is completely international. I'm Iranian, ethnically, uh, have lived here for th over 30 years, but, um, and my, um, my colleagues are all German. <laughs> We have Italians and British people working for us, so it's, in, its, in itself, it's very international. So the thinking that happens within that is already very international within the practice that you set. Um, now, just kind of addressing um, some of those questions, um, in terms of international exchange, I think, I suppose one thing, I might just jump between these questions slightly, but in terms of discipline, what we have to also understand is that discipline is something that is a post-industrial revolution creation. Disciplines did not exist before the 19th century. Um, so if you think about Renaissance, it was, it was constantly artists becoming architects, architects doing art. Um, Inigo Jones, who was actually uh, a set designer, uh, became an architect. So, so it is quite good to think back to the, this point that actually when they didn't exist, there was much more fluidity and much more invention um, in the, the cult cultural context and cultural world. So it's not a, it is a new thing, uh, disciplines, and now we're trying to kind of break it and breaking it slightly um, to open it up is really essential and necessary. Um, but. Uh, it, we do have to realize that it's not a new thing. It's something that we now have to do again because we've, we're realizing that the confines of disciplines um, are actually um, creating too much introvert thinking. Um, and so in terms of international exchange, I suppose uh, for me with our practice, the most important thing is um, knowledge transfer. Um, and actually, in terms of embedding that, that knowledge which comes internationally around a, a certain pedagogy that you might have. So, um, so uh, you know, we operate within a very social context, um, whether you call it art, architecture, I really don't. 
care, but, um, but it is a very particular way of thinking and pedagogy. And then embedding that within a thinking that is kind of across internationally different countries brings a certain network of empowerment uh, to all of us as practitioners, which is very, very important when you're trying to situate your practice um, somewhere. Uh, and you, can, you don't have to situate it becoming really big um, and famous necessarily. You can embed it within a larger network. Um, as an example, uh, there is a project that was, an inter uh, was a European funded project um, between France, we were involved in France, Germany, Spain and Italy, um, where we all looked at how the different practices have been dealing with issues of resilience and resilient practices. And all of them, a lot of, all of them are cultural, uh, cultural organizations and all of them are dealing with it very, very differently. So learning from each other and you bring those knowledge back now this again takes me back, sorry to keep going back to history, but I think it's quite important for us to know what's new and what's, what maybe has happened in the past to, to bring that back. Also, we, that we used to travel, so again international uh, kind of traveling to get knowledge, cultural knowledge is not a new thing. There were journeymen from medieval times where we traveled from Europe to Asia to Iran where they learned about crafts and they learned about arts and they learned about geometry and they brought it back to Renaissance Italy and so on and so forth. It just took much longer <laughs> and now it's much faster. So again, it's not a new thing, but, uh, but it happened when there wasn't the disciplines. So, so how do we deal with that speed with which and the technology that allows us to do that? That in, a, in a much uh, more fluid way. Um, the diaspora kind of uh, question, I suppose I'm a little bit confused what that means, um, because who, who, which diaspora and who, who are we talking about? Is it just people who live in the city or are they audiences? Or Because I come from a very different background, so for me, um, it's kind of working with different ethnic communities in the UK um, that, that probably constitutes that. And it is, as we've heard it so, um, so far, um, it is very difficult to connect these different groups together. I have tried many times. But, you know, I also think, actually, you maybe don't have to. Um, it's as long as they're exposed to each other and as long as they um, are, are, are changing their perceptions of seeing and they're changing their perceptions of how things are and having a conversation, they will just go back to their groups and, and where they feel comfortable. And I kind of have come to a point that I think that's actually all right. As long as there are moments where you bring that out, um, then, um, you know, around maybe common interests or common um, beliefs or, okay, not religion possibly, but maybe religion, I don't know, I'm not going to make judgment. <laughs> but, but I think interest is probably quite in... Our, our band, I think we have a technological problem with sound in Tehran. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, Okay, can you, can you hear me now? Yes, but uh, you know, it, it, it goes on and off, and we have problems to understand. Okay, I'm yes, not going to repeat all that. Perfect, but the voice is completely, <laughs> sorry, sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. So just, okay, I look at you, so I stop. When, I, uh, when you go like this. So if you put your hand up, then I stop. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so um, it said here, I've been very methodical with my, it said you wanted to know some practices <laughs> um, who do these interdisciplinary. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think one group to, to look at, which are actually really interesting, I know they're from the 1950s, but I do think they're very interesting, was the independent group 
um, in the UK that formed at the Institute of Contemporary Arts. And they had uh, writers, uh, playwrights, poets, uh, artists, architects, um, and you know it was the it was the creation of pop art and 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 basically I, what I think is so interesting about them is the fact that they really did in, create something very new through that kind of collaboration and started this very new style of uh, art which was pop art and they they kind of developed that through different mediums. Uh, I think that we're lost again. Oh, hello. Oh. Sorry, can you hear me? Uh, yes, but we lost the last 30 seconds. So okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so they... Why does it happen with me? So, um... We should, we should, uh, maybe we should reconnect, maybe we should dial up on the iMac again, please. Okay. 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 <laughs> I don't have very much more to say. Yeah. <laughs> Exchanges. Is it better now? Yes, yes. Hello. Um, okay, I think the last bit I really said was that it was it, the independent group was actually a very is is a good group to look at, um, just because they um, created this uh, the, a whole new kind of way of thinking about art, and they showed that through the um, uh, that their, their exhibition that they did, which was tomorrow. Anybody know? No, something tomorrow, um, and where, where all these different disciplines came. Late fifties. Yeah, it was late fifties. Um, it's really bad that I don't have a current uh, <laughs> example, but there you go. <laughs> that that's it, Ruth. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and now, last but not least, uh, Hamid Budasadi in Tehran. Over to you, Hamid. Salam be hamishuma. Hello to you all. Salam noye ihuniya mubarak bese. Happy New Year to you guys. Aya da wakum biem inji be taat niga kuni. Ma fe mi kanam ke taat o fagas sefan ye hunar nadoo. If we don't look at theater um, as just an art, you know, if we do don't look at it as just one simple frame that we can call it art. And we can uh, use it, um, um, you know, use its fun functionality in a more, you know, um, you know, increased way. You know, we can increase its functionality if we look at theater not just as a, a you know, frame of art. در واقع به جایی که فکر کنیم صرفاً یک هنره بیاییم به عنوان یک جنبش اجتماعی یک فعالیت اجتماعی بهش نگاه کنیم We should look at theater um, as, a, as a as a you know social um, movement من فکر میکنم که تاعتش مهمترین معجزه خدا رو بی زمینه I think theater is the is the is the most important miracle of God on earth. خب این معجزه رو من مثلا هم توی تهران دیدم که با حالا بچه‌های خود ایرانی کار می‌کنم یا مهاجرای افغانی هم توی لندن دیدم اینو. I see this miracle in Tehran with Iranian and Afghanistani and diaspora and even in London, I see this miracle. I want to talk, I want, uh, to talk about more about the project that I have with Lift Festival. The challenges 
uh, for the, you know, the traveling of tra the challenges of traveling to England. But Kari that was a lift that March and team is that was enjoying it. It's just on him was the hard mojeze boot. And the thing that Mark did for our art project is like a miracle too in lift festival. Shun the danazar abani ko shunani na boot. In first class, it was in, in, impossible. But the moment that we were in London, Mark of shoot. And but we arrived when we arrived to London, Mark said it's done. Mark the se hafte da wagat fiye the Istanbul budim. Can you understand what I'm saying? We have been in Istanbul for three weeks, and we didn't and we didn't know what to do. But she said that sad rules have to be London. And uh, we've been there for 100 years uh, in London. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 100 days. 100 days, sorry. 100 days in London. Yeah. Well, because really, that was not the first time I was in Istanbul, but then she she named it as It was a very uh, you know exciting project because I didn't know anything. Uh, I traveled from Tehran with two words. Uh, These two words were uh, immigration and unfinished, unfinished, unfinished dream. Uh, I think I'm a lucky guy because I never thought in my, thought in my life that I, um, I would have a project that it, uh, includes 20 different nationalities. I never thought of it before. Uh, حالا باید همدیگر میفهمیدیم بعد مشکلات همدیگر متوجه میشدیم و بعد یک مسیر در مسیر مشخصی حرکت میکردیم And in that time we should understand each other when I reached to London with the group and we should understand each other we should find a same and a very a, you know unique path for all of us برای خودم نیستی در واقع چلنج وجود داشت um, there were um, you know many challenges for me at first first uh, one was the you know the uh, you know the situation of a society that I wanted to work with it means England uh, those uh, first three weeks in Istanbul no, 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 no. In, the first three weeks in London helped me a lot to understand that immigrants how immigrants live in a foreign country how, how is their situation uh, uh, first, I want to understand the problems of these immigrants. Then, because of that, I decided to live in that neighborhood. And because I wanted to understand the situation that I want to talk about. Then we uh, reached to that uh, two oh, we cut uh, because something like two or three hundred people came to this rehearsal for you know for audition and we chose sixty five people at, at last. Um, first we needed to you know gain their trust. 
to you know to make them trust us in the first place. And uh, we want to reach a common language, you know. The language that I'm talking about is not a language that we used to talk. <laughs> Maybe we can call it a language of heart because sometimes I uh, we had three translator. I said something to someone, he translated to someone, and he translated to someone else. And after a certain point, they told him. Don't do it. Don't use translators. You tell us, we understand what are you talking about. And we can connect, we are connected to you. For preparing ourselves to reach this point, we had 14 performances, different performances in different parts. Of the city. In Clark Tower, in the downtown, in the to Tramba, in Tramba, in subways. Um, I say um, the theater is not just an art because of that, because the life of these people who, you know, participated in our program uh, was completely changed during this, uh, you know, period. Um, there were so uh, there were uh, many obstacles in their daily life that they managed to you know overcome it. And they you know their uh, you know uh, point of view of life uh, is a little bit was a little bit changed you know. <laughs> Uh, there was a, you know, a little bit old lady, we can't say old uh, for ladies, but there was a 73 old ladies that uh, she said that I was so alone, but after this project uh, I'm, communi I'm communicating with the people that uh, I couldn't before. Uh, in Tehran, we had this situation too. When I worked in Tehran, there were many people that, you know, recovered the thing that uh, were you know were within them in, inside them and they uh, managed to recreate these images of themselves in new way now you you know uh, consider this these two things in mind in Wherever it is in London, Paris, on te Tehran, theater is a tool. A tool can, you know, change and, um, you know, help to revolute the society, the nation. Right. 
I think, you know, people with the tools that they, had, uh, that they have in their hands can change the things. I think a uh, politician sucks a little bit. They can uh, it, it, it is obvious that they can't. <laughs> they couldn't. Sorry, but it is like this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's a nice note in which to finish this, this part of our program, Politicians Suck. <laughs> um, okay, um, we're running very late, as you will imagine, given all um, these interesting contributions and also our techno technological problems. But perhaps I can ask our colleagues both in Tehran and in Cambridge, what questions come to mind? There's so many things that have come up that um, and then I really would like to bring you straight in, but so. Yeah, I, I had a question for Arvand um, around this, this idea of um, reconsidering your, your, the image of yourself and, and also a question or a point that came up around um, a choreographer needing a multicultural element to the performance. And I suppose um, being presenting being an international festival, we, we, we slap on our program, this is an Iranian show and this is a Brazilian show. And I wonder how you, know, you feel about, um, clearly you know, it's amazing to, to kind of, um, I think one of the you know, most important things is asking audiences to reconsider their perceptions of, of a country and, and um, specifically a, a, com a complicated country like Iran. But I wonder how you feel about being a spokesperson or you know, be, you know, your, your role as representing that country. Um, and whether that feels complicated. Uh, and also, I guess, on the kind of question of diaspora and audience, I, I was kind of interested to know, on that same point, whether you're interested in having, do you want to look out into the audience and see an, an Iranian diaspora audience, or do you want to see a kind of um, uh, a British audience who can then, who you're kind of challenging their preconceptions? And I'm going to ask for very brief answers here. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the things that I always had problem with was considering, you know, it was like being in, you know, there are so many companies from all around the world in different festivals, but Iranians are like aliens. Uh, we, have, we, have, we have added some aliens to our program as well this year. And you have to come to watch them. They have also theater. Can you believe that? And this is marketing techniques always have uh, so, bothering and I always was having this I want to be considered as, in, as an artist not f not uh, from my region or my geographical point or anything else because as first thing first is we're believing that we are we are living in globalization and this uh, I yeah this geography is affecting maybe the region but this is not the way that I and now work, if you see my work, maybe you cannot identify it as any Iranian elements inside. But at the same time, directly, we need to talk about so many things, like so many things that we can experience and share these experiences together. So I think, um, I think it's a very, very tiny border that if you, if you just walk into that, it will be much more um, I think respectful for as an artist to just be able to present their works and be able to be there, not just to, even if they don't, talk, they want don't want to talk about their own societies. Maybe they want to talk about more general things. And yet, of course, you acknowledge that you're always interested in breaking down the boundaries between you and the other, yeah. and it's important that we acknowledge that we are different and yet at the same time what we're trying to say is that it doesn't matter that we're different we can still dialogue but uh, yeah. Taranj. sorry i have a question to iran um so you you both talked about uh this idea of um whether it's you call it artists or theater practitioners i don't know but anyway as agents of change which i find really, really um, interesting. And, um, and for me personally, kind of having always practiced here, whenever I go to Iran and see the work, I'm always so, um, 
it feels like I've come home because it's always kind of, uh, of course, there is something within us and that political agenda um, for me is always really, really interesting uh, that it's always there somehow, whether directly or non-directly. Um, so, how, but, but I suppose um, in, in my Pecha Kucha, I'm also talking about the, um, the kind of uh, the Russians, the agitprop trains. And, and so in a way, whose value um, do you then, then put forward as, or, or, or how do you, I don't know, how do you, how do you do that? How do you do that kind of uh, being an agent of change? Are you putting certain value systems forward? Are there certain ideologies being put forward? And whose are they? Whose ideologies are they? Because are they the, the artistic directors? Because that maybe is a bit more problematic or, you know, I don't know. So that's my question. Torrance, can I ask you to um, have an Iranian version simple? Because uh, I don't know, maybe this, uh, maybe this uh, things doesn't like you. You keep completely on and up. Uh, I, I understand your question, but. در حقیقت چیزی که تورنج داره میپرسه اینه که آیا شما برای اینکه این تغییرات رو جلو ببرید و این چنج تغییرات رو به وجود بیارین از ایدئولوژی های مشخص و خاصی و طرز فکر های مشخص خاصی پیروی میکنید یا نه؟ اوکی، 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 Okay. Set uh, ideology. We see what is the needs and desire of a society. What is the problem of the society? And we try to fulfill uh, this desire. We don't, you know, uh, we, we don't go forward based on, on the ideology of someone or some organization. <laughs> باید اونها رو در واقع بیدار کرد اونها رو در واقع انداخت تو مسیر درست We are a country that have, you know, that has so many young people We are, we have many young souls And because of that we should plan for them You know, we should plan for the future ما در واقع آدم های در واقع بزرگ سال رو شاید نتونیم عوض شون کنیم که خیلی سخت باشه Maybe we can change the adults, but we can change the children and the new generation. And again, the situation tells us what to do and what not to do. I think as a personal uh, ideology, any artist can have some personal ideology. Um, I think art is something that I cannot put it in a cage. I cannot, uh, if I want to um, just, um, if I want to limit art, I cannot make new things. And uh, I always, in my life, I always, uh, thinking about the creativity and uh, the best way of cre creativity in my field is to let the art to fly and uh, to make it bigger and expand it by flying by 
thinking uh, internationally and globally about it. It's my ideology, but uh, uh, in this case, it really depends on the project, if any producer, any idea of anyone else can, can be different. من یه نکته که میخوام اضافه کنم اینه که معمولا جامعه ای که اینقدر نسل جوان توش زیاده اینا خواه نخوا ایدولوژی ها هم تغییر میدن اینا باعث میشن که تغییراتی در سطح جامعه اتفاق دفته و ایدولوژی ها هم حتی با اونا تغییر میکنن مستر دادوی سید در این یه نوی سوسایتی ویل مینی یونگ پیپل دیت نو جنریشن ویل چینج دا ایدیالوژیز تو دی هف ایمپکت آن دا ایدیالوژیز در وی هف بفور and uh, it's based on them too. Thank you. Now, do, do we have some questions from the floor, please? Uh, if you could, um, do we have, shall we just give a mic, um, this mic? Yeah. yeah. And if you could tell us your name, please. <laughs> That's it. That's, it. You, That's it, you have to come forward. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> My name is Eva Simmons and I live in Cambridge and my question is not to anyone specifically and again you can decide who's best to reply but I'm in listening to you talking about these multicultural and international performances involving different people I'm trying to picture in my mind what actually happened on the stage if there was a stage was it speech mainly. Uh, obviously the lady in Tehran works a lot with dance, but was there music? What, how did you overcome the language problems? Did you agree on a language or did you use different languages? I would like something a bit more concrete from somebody where I can actually picture in my mind's eye and my mind's ear what actually happened in the performing space. Thank you. Thank you. چیزی صحبت می‌کنم مثلا توی استیج می‌خوان یه زبان حرف بزنن دو زبونه یا تو برای خانمی که تو ایرانی که دانس کردنش هم میتونه مشکل برانگیز بشه چون چجوری ارتباط برقرار می‌کنین تو پروژه‌ی بنفر Well I um, for example one of the shows that I made with from uh, Vincent Van Gogh the painter it was uh, we have two performers as I said with two nationalities Iranian and French they both speaking they were a play with the storytelling. They were speaking in Farsi and in French. And we had, in Tehran, we had Farsi over titles written up there for Iranians. And also in France, we had uh, Farsi over titles for Iranians also. So uh, this, they translate, uh, we translate what they're saying in the over titles they can read. And at the t same time, we did another project which was dance-based, so everybody was dancing, so nobody was talking. And in the last project that we had, uh, which Ida, Amy, and uh, also Moraine was there, they were speaking in their own languages in Tehran, and we had Farsi overtitles. And sometimes they danced together, sometimes they... Uh, for example, Ida was standing like 75 minutes all in the stage and not moving at all but the other performers were communicating together their, in their own languages. One of the uh, qualities of that show was the people was talking in four different languages together. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, to, uh, just to give you something about languages, I also can talk later about uh, how it works and how the show could be. Do it. Any of you in Tehran would like to share some thoughts on this? Yeah. First, we should believe that theater is for seeing, watching, not listening. You know, listening is the second base of theater, but watching is the main. <laughs> جنس بودن ماست داره حرف میزنه نوع بودن ماست که حرف میزنه نه زبان زبان فقط یه آهنگ یه موسیقی you know our presence talk to the audience our language is just like notes like music it you know it's for the atmosphere و ما با با قلبمون با جسممون در قدم اول این صحبت میکنیم 
And we talk with our body, with our soul, with our heart in the first place. And even by the language of the movement, which is the strongest way of speaking, <laughs> I think it's absolutely done. من یه مثال که میتونم بزنم تو سینما هم این قضیه خیلی کمک میکنه یعنی بدونیم که ما لزوما زبان همدیگه رو بشناسیم میتونیم از فیلم های همدیگه لذت ببریم ما همونقدر میتونیم از فیلم ترانسماتیک لذت ببریم که یه انگلیسی زبان یا اونا همونقدر از جدای نادر از فیلم میتونن لذت ببرن که ایرانی مثل دادویی سه لنگویج از نات امپورتن بکاز این موویز وی سی ایش آدرز موویز فور اگزامپل وی ایرانی از سی ترانس مالک فور اگزامپل تری آف لایف و وی انجوی ایت ویری مچ و یو سی یو گایز سی سپریشن و ای تنگ لنگویج از نات اپرابلم پیپل اندرستند شد ای هوب دات ایت گوز پارت آف دی وی تو انسرین یور کوشن دو وی هاف انادر کوشن فرم دی فلور Sorry. Up. Would you mind coming forward, sir? Huh? Oh, it's you. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna say it in Farsi so you understand clearly, and then I'll translate it into English. But just salam. Because I'm beginning to enjoy the news. But I'm making a good stream. I'm going to say a lot of performance, thought, and what I'm saying. Things that are in all disciplines are different. For example, art. و حتی دیسیپلین های متفاوت آرشیتکت آرکیولوژی غیره و غیره و خیلی اینجا مثلا چیزایی پرزنت کردن همکاری های اینجوری اینتردیسیپلینری با همکار کردن که خیلی کارهای جالبی ازش در اومده خواستم ببینم آیا در ایران شما همچین علاقه ای هست و آیا همچین پروژه های اتفاق افتاده که مثلا با دیسیپلین های خارج از حتی هنر خارج از تاج همکاری داشته باشیم و بتونیم کارهای جدید درست بکنیم So sorry, I'm, I'm just saying that um, I, I, I mentioned that we've had all this interdisciplinary um, presence here today uh, uh, with, with people from sciences and arts and even other disciplines, architecture. And I was wondering if in Iran there, there has been such collaborations or, or, or there's any desire for this sort of collaborations, not just within theater, theater and arts, but also outside it. Bein arish dey. For example, um, I think one of my uh, important ambition is dance therapy and movement therapy, especially in my country because of the war, because of a lot of strong situation that we had in our country. I really think that um, as an artist, I'm responsible to uh, Therapy. Even my parents, even my friends, that all the people are so disappointed uh, because of the things that happens uh, after it's the reflection of the war, it's the reflection of the hard situation that we had uh, during these 30 years. So uh, I really understand that I can uh, I can use the, uh, movement therapy and dance therapy in my country. ما در توی سالهای گذشته یه تجربیاتی رو داشتیم تو کشورمون که یه جور استفاده از هنرهای مفهومی بود به این معنی که در یک فضای مشخص با یک معماری با نقاشی تا آت موسیقی امکانی رو داشتیم که یک پرفرمنسی رو یک حرکتی رو ایجاد بکنیم که اون وقت درک جدیدی رو برای این مخاطب رو ایجاد بکنیم بله از همه این چیزهایی که در کنار هم برای گیرد Uh, we have some experiences, um, uh, you know, we, we, for example, it's, it, it, uh, in some buildings, it, uh, some places and, you know, eras, we had uh, some performances, some conceptual art, which included uh, music, uh, you know, sculptures, you know, paintings, and yeah, we had that too. But, you uh, have to be noticed, you can so bad. Mr. Purazay said, yeah, I had some project that includes, you know, the architectural elements of the place that we performed the show. And um, we had this kind of situation. And I, by myself, I, we had a week in Tehran that city halls, uh, you know, uh, had, um, it, it, it was about health, 
and the, you know clean uh, weather in Tehran because we have one of the most polluted cities in the uh, and we had some um, performers which uh, they were in white clothes and uh, they had a whole week in many places in Tehran they had the march they go everywhere and um, they had some pol policies and it was a very good show but, but I think maybe we had more and we, we, we don't know other people. Thank you. Um, I think, sadly, we've run out of time. Um, we're already a little bit over. We did begin somewhat late. But at this point, I hope you will join me in thanking um, our friends in Tehran, uh, Dani, uh, Hamid, Reza, and Ide, and our panel here, Arvan and Toranj, and uh, John for um, everything they have um, told us about and shared with us. There's so much more that we, really that we could, we could be asking. But um, sadly, this is all we have time for today. But thank you very much for joining us. And uh, I hope that we can continue some of these conversations and out having coffee. Thank you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>